Hi, and welcome to Therapy Explained. My name is Anise Cantor. I'm the therapist of color for people of color and your very own mental health cheerleader. I post videos about all things mental health because I believe that mental health information should be free and easily accessible to everyone. If you agree and would like to help spread the word, make sure to subscribe and share this video. Every video also comes with its own cheat sheet that summarizes the points made in the video. So to get yours, make sure that you're following me on Instagram at talk therapy. That's T O C therapy, because after all, I am the therapist of color. Today's video is the third video in my relationship series. So if you haven't watched the first two videos, make sure to check that out. Today, we're going to be diving in to what the avoidant attachment style is and how to help ourselves manage it if that's what we have it. So let's talk about what avoidant attachment looks like in our relationships and what it can feel like. If we have an avoidant attachment style, then we most likely have difficulty with emotional intimacy and vulnerability. Our relationships are either short-lived or if they are long-term, they're most likely going to remain surface level. It's hard for us to really reach a level of intimacy, of true vulnerability with our partners. It feels like a fear of losing our independence. We're often overwhelmed by the emotions of our partner or the needs of our partner, and we might feel like it's just too much. So why did we develop this attachment style in the first place? It's very likely that our caregivers had a difficult time meeting our needs within a reasonable amount of time. Most likely our caregivers did not spend too much time playing with us, being affectionate with us, or giving us the time and attention that we needed. We were probably abandoned in some sort of way, whether physically or emotionally by a parent, and that taught us very early on that we can't really count on people that people will leave us, disappoint us, and betray us. And so we really need to make sure that we are independent and self-sufficient. We cannot allow ourselves to count on other people because they'll leave. So this is a way of protecting ourselves. It helps us because again, we're independent and strong and more than capable of taking care of ourselves. It also keeps us from experiencing too much heartbreak. We might feel sad when we lose someone, but we're more than capable of taking care of ourselves. The problem with this is that we're not allowing other people into our inner world. We're not developing intimate relationships and more likely than not, they keep ending. It's hard for our partners to ever really feel like they know us because we're not allowing them to. So again, while this protects us, it doesn't really help us in terms of our romantic relationships. So, now that we know what it feels like, what it looks like, and why we developed it, let's talk about what we can do to help ourselves get closer to a secure attachment and allow people in. The first thing I would invite you to do is to sit with yourself and practice some self-reflection. What do you need to feel comfortable and safe in a relationship? Do you perhaps need alone time? Do you need to make sure that you have time with just your friends, that you have your own activities? Maybe to make sure that you have an afternoon to yourself outside of the activities that you're engaging in with your partner. That's the first step. The second step is once you already know what you need in a relationship, communicate that. Use your healthy communication skills to express to your partner, hey, this is what I need in this relationship. And it's not because I don't love you or care for you or because I'm not committed to this relationship, but because I am committed to, make, committed to making this relationship work. I wanna let you know how I can feel safe and secure in this relationship so that you and I can also be connected and intimate emotionally. We also want to help set boundaries, particularly if we're just starting to date someone to be very open and honest about what we need, the amount of emotional and physical space that we require. And the more that the other person is able to respect that and validate for us, our boundaries and our needs, then slowly we can start to allow ourselves to trust that person more and more. Which leads me to my last point. We want to try to give the other person the benefit of the doubt. Trust that if they are respecting our boundaries and they are listening to what our needs are, then maybe we can trust them more and more with more intimate parts of ourselves. Remember, if this person is with us, 
if they are in a relationship with us or if they're dating us, they probably want to take care of us. They want to get to know us and they're interested in caring for us. They probably love us. So they're not out to betray us or to take anything from us or they're not really meaning to disappoint us if they ever do. They really want to get to know us. And again, if they're respecting our boundaries and communication about our needs, then we can slowly allow them in. Remember, it's okay to take it at your own pace. There's nothing wrong with needing your own space or wanting to go slowly. But what's important is communicating that to our partners. They need to know what our needs are in order to help us meet them. Otherwise, they are left to try to figure it out on their own. So again, we want to communicate all these things. So let's review before we go. Remember, the avoidant attachment style often looks like short-lived and surface level relationships because we tend to feel overwhelmed by the needs and emotions of our partner. We develop this attachment style as a way to protect ourselves because we most likely experience betrayal, disappointment, or abandonment in our past attachments or with our caregivers. The best way to help ourselves develop secure, safe, loving relationships is to sit with ourselves and figure out what we need. How much space do we need emotionally and physically and then use our healthy communication skills and healthy boundaries to establish them and communicate them with our partners or potential partners. Communication is key, letting them know that we need these things and we're asking for them because we want to make the relationship work. We don't want to abandon them emotionally either. And lastly, we want to give the other pe person the benefit of the doubt. Our partner or potential partner wants to get to know us. They're interested in us, they care for us. They're not out to disappoint us, betray us, or manipulate us or take anything from us in any way. So as they start to respect and validate our needs, we can slowly allow ourselves to let them in and trust them with more and more parts of ourselves. It's okay to take it at your pace. There is no hurry. And the person who's right for you will wait and respect that. If you give any of these tips a try, make sure to comment below or if any that anything that I said felt familiar to you, whether it's because you've dated someone that sounds like this or because you yourself recognize some of these patterns in yourself, comment below and let me know. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and your cheat sheet is already available to you on Instagram, so make sure to follow me there. I wish you the very best of luck. I hope that these things were helpful for you and you can start to put them into practice. And of course, above all, remember, I'm always cheering for you.